Hey loves, Tony here from TL Yarn Crafts and welcome to another Yarn Snob Reviews video. I recently took a trip to Joanne and ran across several new to me yarns from Lion Brand. They really took it to the limit with the novelty yarns this time around. And though this video is sponsored by Lion Brand, thank you very much Lion Brand, I am not going to take it easy on them. Strap in loves, the texture roller coaster ride is about to begin. As always, I'll be giving my initial reactions, likes and dislikes, and rounding it out with my rating of 1 to 10 hooks. Links to all of the yarns and tools found in this video are down in the description. Now let the judgment commence. First up is Oh Baby Organic. They are so cute and teeny, I had to refrain from buying one of each color. <laughs> oh Baby Organic is a category two sport weight yarn made from 100% organic cotton. It costs $6 for a 50 gram ball, which has 180 yards in it. The color palette is an interesting mix of primary colors with a hint of softness. Oh Baby Organic is marketed as a great option for the eco-conscious crafter as well as those with sensitive skin. Admittedly, I don't really fall in either of these categories, but I can appreciate how soft this cotton is compared to many other cottons marketed as baby yarns. I can also appreciate that Lion Brand is expanding their selection of lighter weight yarns. Lion Brand's selection of sport weight yarns is pretty limited, so Oh Baby Organic is a great addition. There's a bit of a trend of me bashing cotton-based yarns in my reviews, but something about Oh Baby Organic really just did it for me. When I first heard organic cotton, I expected something really scratchy and natural feeling, but that's not what I got from this yarn at all. It definitely has that classic cotton feel, but it's incredibly smooth, and the tight twist of its plies gives this yarn stellar stitch definition. The only drawback I can see from this yarn is the price tag. $6 for a 50 gram ball is a little bit steep for Lion Brand yarns, especially outside of their LB collection. While the combination of eco-friendly fiber and a lighter weight yarn justifies the cost in my mind, I could see the average maker comparing this yarn to say a Kobu, which has a similar fiber and is slightly heavier for the same exact price. Overall, I'm giving Oh Baby Organic 7 out of 10 hooks. I think a yarn like this has a lot of potential, but it's up to the company to promote its usefulness and justify the cost. In my mind, you certainly could market this yarn as great for babies since it's easy care and has a baby-friendly color palette, but I might have taken this in the direction of tailored garments or even modern amigurumi. With a little strategic marketing, I could see this yarn, or a version of it, becoming a staple in many crocheter stashes. Next up is Warm and Fuzzy, also from the A Star Is Born collection. Quick side note, I tried to look up information about this collection and I didn't find much. From what I can surmise though, it's a selection of yarn specifically for babies. So Warm and Fuzzy is a category four worsted weight, 100% polyester yarn that's made to feel like the velvet yarns currently on the market. For $7 each, you get a five ounce cake with 245 yards, which is a pretty darn good deal. The color palette is a mix of pastels with all the likely suspects and a few neon colors mixed in. I will say I was quite partial to the toasted marshmallow and stone colors that I was able to pick up from Joanne. Honestly, I am a sucker for a good neutral. True Lion Brand enthusiasts will be familiar with a yarn called Velux. Way back in 2018, Lion Brand released a worsted weight velvet yarn called Velux, featuring a palette of sultry fall colors like marigold and emerald. Warm and Fuzzy is basically a carbon copy of Velux with a more crowd-friendly color palette. And I'm not hating on that. Honestly, one reason I didn't use Velux much was because of the limited color palette. So kudos to Lion Brand for seeing the capacity of a lighter weight velvet yarn. The yarn itself is very nice. I'm a fan of velvet yarns and really like that this one is worsted weight while many others in the store are bulky weight. The yarn glides pretty easily, I didn't come across any knots or breaks, and the colors complement each other really well. I don't know if I just got lucky, but it was actually really easy to find the center pulls of these cakes and I didn't end up with any yarn barf. This yarn calls for a five millimeter crochet hook, which is standard for a worsted weight yarn, but I would recommend going down a hook size for any velvet yarn so you can avoid the common issue of worming. By keeping the stitches simple and the design straightforward, a project made with velvet yarn can be chic and sweet at the very same time. I will happily give Warm and Fuzzy 7 hooks out of 10. It's a perfectly fine yarn. Nothing special to write home about, but it is a great choice if your project calls for velvet yarn. Much like my crush on Yucardi, which was made with the original Velux. Now if you're more of a home decor person, the Maisie Velvet Pillow is a free pattern that I made with Velux as well. The versatility of a yarn like Warm and Fuzzy really makes it a go-to to elevate a simple pattern. 
Next on the chopping block, <coughs> excuse me, I mean, the next yarn we'll review is Velux Impressions, a very interesting and playful cake yarn. Can you hear the political correctness in my voice? Because I surely can. In all seriousness though, Velux Impressions is a Category 6 super bulky weight polyester yarn. According to Joanne.com, the concept is a mix of confetti and velvet yarn that plays up its very colorful and youthful qualities. For just $5 a cake, you can crochet or knit something wildly fun and wearably soft. For those who've always wondered why I use the term yarn snob, it is because of yarns like this. I call myself a yarn snob because I know what I like and as a designer, I can visualize the opportunities in a new yarn. But this, this Velux Impressions, this was a challenge for me. The first turn off was the texture, which can only be called weird. It's like if Lion Brand Homespun was made with velvet yarn, then they added little twisty nubs to it. Like, why would you even do that? The next turn off was the color and how it was used in the yarn. The color combos themselves really aren't all that bad, but when I saw how short the bands of color were and how abruptly the colors changed, I rolled my eyes so hard I gave myself a headache. The entire idea makes me wonder, who asked for this? I always hope that actually crocheting with a yarn will make me like it a little bit more, but unfortunately that wasn't the case with this yarn. The nubs kept getting in my way and it was pretty tricky to find the stitches. Once I got going though, I was able to get a little bit of a rhythm, but I know I'd never really enjoy the experience of working with this yarn. The look, the feel, and the experience of working with this yarn are just as important as the project I'm making and I couldn't get over how poor that experience was. Now you might be thinking, Tony, there has to be something you liked about this yarn. I mean, sure, I'm a Professional. I can always find something that I like about a yarn. In this case, there were no flyaway fibers when I was working with the yarn, and I mean, that's a good thing. My biggest issue, though, is the poor crocheting experience and the idea that I'd have such a severely limited number of projects I could actually make with this yarn. After giving it the old college try, Velux Impressions gets a 3 out of 10 hooks rating from me. Here I have It's So Fluffy, a textured cake yarn that is incredibly soft to the touch. Fluffy is a category six, super bulky weight, 100% polyester yarn. You're gonna get 120 yards in a 100 gram cake for $5. This uniquely bumpy yarn has a surprisingly sophisticated color palette, which is what really drew me in. But upon further inspection of the yarn strand, I found that I'd been hoodwinked, bamboozled, and led astray. When I got home with my bag of goodies, I fully expected a strand of pillowy soft fiber akin to velvet. But what I got was a strand of eyelash yarn with nubs of that pillowy soft fiber. My first thought was, what the heck am I supposed to do with this? I had issues from the moment I got this yarn on my hook. The ball band recommends a 9mm hook, but I went with an 8mm in hopes that I could get a more consistent fabric from the yarn. After making my initial chain, the fluff and the eyelashes made it nearly impossible to see my stitches. And once I got down the chain, making a row of single crochet stitches was even harder. Though the yarn is considered a super bulky weight, my hook could barely get into the tops of my stitches, which had collapsed onto themselves. I'm sad to say, working with It's So Fluffy made me long to go back to Velux Impressions. It's So Fluffy gets two out of 10 hooks from me. I won't count it out completely as I feel like it could be fun to knit with or even to use for craft projects like weavings. The texture of it is fun and unique in a good way, just not for crocheting. Just when I was losing all faith in this entire yarn haul, I pulled Shawl and a Ball Fab out of the bag. Shawl and a Ball Fab, which I'll call Fab for short, is a play on the original Shawl and a Ball. While Shawl and a Ball is reminiscent of a thinner homespun yarn, Fab has a much smoother texture with wider bands of color that transition effortlessly into one another. $10 is gonna get you a 150 gram ball with 459 yards of worsted weight yarn in it. This yarn is only offered in six color combinations, but each one has its own personality and I totally love it. While I'm drawn to the subtle nature of Swallowtail, I can also connect with the vibrance of Admirals, which is a hot red and purple mix. My first impression of this yarn is that it is incredibly soft. The fiber content is a mix of cotton, polyester, acrylic, and wool, which made me really curious to break down the construction of these strands. After my very unscientific research, I got the impression that the yarn was made from a loose cotton casing combined with a strand of shimmer, then the wool and acrylic blend fiber is blown into the casing. Whether I'm right or wrong, Fab is a lovely value yarn in every respect. 
Fab is just as lovely to work with as it is to look at. The yarn glides smoothly on my hook and you get a hint of the warmth the wool will bring to the party. It's not until I turned this yarn into stitches that I got a true feel for the soft halo that it produced. This feature is going to hold in the warmth, making anything made from this yarn both beautiful and practical. The only drawback I could find with this yarn is the potential for knots. The yarn I pulled from the center ball was pretty jumbled and it took me a while to unwind what was likely only about 10 yards of yarn. If I was using this yarn, I would probably wind it into a cake with my ball winder before attempting even the first stitch. Everything about this yarn appeals to me, so I'm giving it 9 out of 10 hooks. I think the price point is fair, it's unique enough to stand out even in the biggest yarn stash, and the colors make my heart just swoon. While shawls are an obvious choice for this yarn, I think it would be great for garments as well as more delicate accessories. The last yarn for today is Velux Jumbo. It's a little tricky for me to put my finger on exactly what this yarn wants to be, but I can tell right away that this yarn is fun, super soft, and it's here for a good time. Jumbo is a category seven jumbo weight velvet yarn with a chain net construction. While it looks like rope from the outside, the center is hollow, allowing this yarn to relax on itself and making it easier to crochet with. One ball sets you back $10 for 21 yards, and you can pick from 13 super saturated colors, including muted neutrals and spirited brights. Jumbo is novelty yarn at its finest. From the color scheme to the yarn weight to the texture, it's a yarn that doesn't take itself too seriously. And that's how I wanted to approach it with this review. I wanted to have some fun and do some experimenting. Now the ball band recommends a 19 millimeter crochet hook. I don't have one that size, so I tried a 15 millimeter that I had on hand. The stitches were slow going, but they were enormous. <laughs> the 15 millimeter hook gave me a dense fabric with a surprisingly bouncy texture and great stretch. It gave me ideas for fun graphic pillows or even a luxuriously squishy rug that I could put on my side of the bed. I tried a 25 millimeter crochet hook and the fabric was looser than I expected. While I could certainly make something out of this, I figured that with use, the stitches would become too loose and uneven, so I scrapped that idea. Thinking a little bit outside of the box, I grabbed my lucid fork from Furls and I got to making a cord. I could have made that cord all day long. This is some thick yarn and it likely would have benefited from a slightly larger fork, but the cord I made came out dense, chunky, and so very satisfying. A longer cord like this could serve as the base for a festive holiday garland, and I could even see using this cord as an alternative to tassels on a thick blanket. While this yarn would likely be used in craft projects as opposed to crochet projects, it was fun to let my inner yarn investigator have some fun with it. I'll give Velux Jumbo 7 out of 10 hooks and keep playing around with it until I find that one perfect project. I'd love to know your thoughts on these yarns. Do you agree with my reviews or was I dead wrong? Let me know in the comments either way. And if you'd like to win a gift bag of the yarns that I reviewed here, I'm running a giveaway for my Facebook group, TLYC Makers. Head over there to enter. Thanks again to my friends at Lion Brand for sponsoring this video, even though I'm pretty sure they'll never want to work with me again. I'm Tony, and I'll see y'all next time.